Hello students, and in this video we're going to talk about radicals and rational exponents. So let's get started. The purpose is that at the end of this lesson you should be able to simplify square roots, products of square roots, quotients for a square root, rationalized denominators, nth roots, rational exponents, and the arithmetic of roots. So this is just a very quick review of what a square root is. A square root refers to the root side of the area of a square. So here in this example we have a square with area 16. Taking the square root gives us an area or a side length of 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. Quick way to do it here on the right is if we take the square root of 4 we can create a factor tree. We circle the bottoms or the fruits of our tree. We write, rewrite it in our square root and again in order to simplify a square root we're looking for pairs of things. So we can cancel out these two twos and write down just the one and that's our square root. So let's do a couple quick examples here. Square root is 24. That is 6 times 4. And if you didn't choose the same ones that I chose, that's fine. These can then be broken down into 2 times 3 and 2 times 2. So we are simplified. We're going to go ahead and rewrite our roots. So that gives us the square root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. And again, we're looking for pairs. So two twos. And then we're going to write one down. And that's all we have. That's That can be pulled out. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite our square root sign and leave our leftovers inside. So that's 3 times 2, which is 6. Let's look at example 2. It's the same idea. We're going to do our factor tree, but this time we're not going to go through the whole process. We're just going to write down our roots. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. And x cubed is x times x times x. y is y times y times y times y. And we obviously have times z. So what we can do here now is start canceling things out. So this shouldn't be a difficult process. We're again just looking for pairs. So here we can cancel out two twos. So we're going to write one of those down. We want to write it down immediately so you don't forget. We have two x's. So we're going to write one of those x's down. We have not only two y's, so there's one set, we have two sets of y's. So that should leave us with y times y. And z, there's only one, so we have to leave that in the square root. So we have 2 times x times y times y, square root of 2z, because that's what's left over. The only other thing I would do to this is to simplify what we have. So this should actually read 2x y squared. And that would be our final answer. So let's look at products and quotients of square roots. These are actually very simple. When you do a product of a square root, it just says if you're multiplying square roots that don't have the same number inside, you could multiply them like normal and just rewrite it. So this square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is the same thing as saying the square root of 15. The quotient is the same thing as saying the square root of 4 ninths is equal to the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 9. So let's solve a couple quick examples. Number 1, that's a square root of 6 times the square root of 3. That gives us the square root of 18. But we don't want to do it that way. We want to break them up. So the square root of 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3. And then we had that times 3 for our square root of 3. By doing this, we can quickly and easily identify things that are pairs, so we can cancel out the threes. So we have 3 square root of 2 as our final answer. So we're going to go ahead and write that down here. And that's it. Example 2, square root of 5 times the square root of 10. 
I think you see where this is going. We would have the square root of 5 times 5 times 2 times 5, because 10 is 2 times 5. We can cancel out the two fives. And we are left with 5 square root of 2. And that's your final answer there. Quotients, same idea. We have the square root of 4 thirds. That's equal to the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 3. We know that the square root of 4 is 2. And square root of 3 doesn't have a clean square root, so we're going to leave it there for now. Example 4, same idea. We can simplify that. That gives us square root of... Oh, we're going to do one more thing. Notice how 18 divided by 8, they do have a factor that we can simplify. They both have a 2 in common. So I'm going to divide a 2 out already. That gives us the square root of 9x squared divided by the square root of 4. And we know that the square root of 9x squared looks like this. And then when we start pulling things out, we know we can cancel out two threes, write one down here. Then we have the square root of x, or the x times x. We're going to write one down here. And then the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2. Therefore, our final answer is 3x divided by 2. So rationalizing denominators. So this is really important. Now, to rationalize means to make sense of. And denominator is the bottom portion of a fraction. So when we're rationalizing denominators, we're making sure that the bottom portion of a fraction makes sense. So we're going to take a look at the example from the previous slide. We are not allowed to have a square root on the bottom or on the denominator. So we took this example from the last problem. So this is where we left it off here. Now to get rid of the square root from the denominator, we're not just going to cancel out or get rid of the square root because it doesn't make sense to do that. The way we do that is by rationalizing. So the way we get rid of it is to multiply by the square root of 3 to the denominator. But what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And what happens is we get 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 3. And the reason why the 3 on the denominator goes away is because if we take the square root of 3 right here and we take the multiply by the square root of 3 there, that gives us the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 is 3. So that's why it works. Example 2 and example 3 look very, very similar but do very different things. Example 1 looks just like the example above us. Notice that the entire denominator is under the square root. It's really important to notice that. So the entire denominator is under the square root. So just like in the previous example, we multiply the square root of x minus 3 because that's what's on the denominator to the top and bottom. And we get 2 times the square root of x minus 3. And notice that square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x minus 3, they're the same exact thing. So the square root goes away. Example 2 looks very similar to 1, but with a very big difference. Notice that in example 1, the square root covers the entire thing. In example 2, the square root only covers the x. So in order for us to do that, we have to use an inverse. And this is how easily it is. So instead of just doing the square root of x minus 3 the entire thing, we do the opposite. So we do the square root of x plus 3. So it's a difference of squares. So what happens when we do that is we have 2 times the quantity of the square root of x plus 3. And then we have the square root of x minus 3 times the quantity of the square root of x plus 3. So when we try to simplify that, we have to use the FOIL method. So that means we're going to take the square root of x and multiply it by the square root of x. And then we're going to take the square root of x and multiply it by to positive 3. And then we're going to take negative 3 multiply to the square root of x and negative 3 times positive 3. 
when we do that, we get 2 times the square root of x plus 6, because we also did FOIL and on the numerator as well, so that's how we got this. And then for the denominator, square root of x times the square root of x, again, same number, multiplying with a square root, goes away. And then square root of x plus 3 is 3 square root of x. And then when we do negative 3 times the square root of x, that's negative 3 root x. And negative 3 plus 3 is negative 9. So you'll notice here that we have 3 square root of x and negative 3 square root of x. They're opposites of each other or inverses, so they cancel out. And you are left with 2 square root of x plus 6, all divided by x minus 9.